everyone and welcome to Football Therapists. Today I'm going to analyze Xavi Sparsa with game sequences by first presenting the three ways through which the Catalans create uh, 1v1 situations on the wing. Game situations that are precisely so since the arrival of Adama Traoré. Even if we've also seen Usman Dembele in this role as well as Ferran Torres to a lesser extent. I'll then also talk about counter-pressing, as well as about uh, a very recognizable passing pattern since Chavi's arrival, before, um, before concluding by also talking about his involvement in the transfer window and his management in general. But without further ado, uh, let's start with the first of these three tactical adjustments Xavi made in order to facilitate these 1v1 situations. The central positioning of the full box uh, inside. This tactical adjustment is mainly embodied, embodied by Dani Alves because you know he is no longer as capable as capable of making overlapping runs and then come back to to thwart possible counter attacks. It is better not to let him go too far forward. Position more centrally, as shown in the picture, it also allows the Blaugranas to, to take advantage of his magnificent passes in the, into the back of the of the opponent defense, as well as his, value, as his ability to recover balls left in the in, in the center of the of the pitch. But this positioning also generates more space on the side in, in question, and, and therefore more time for the, the winger there. By staying low and central, Daniel Vess is pinning here uh, Joao Felix, letting therefore Adama Traoré and Mark. Although Traoré is well positioned uh, as well, close to the touchline to stretch this Atletico Madrid defense, it's also helped by, it, um, by, by the positioning of Pedri, who is pinning Mario Hermoso here. Being unmarked, and marked, Adama will be able to, to receive a long ball. So, the sequence is going, it's going to come. Now, to pass towards Adama. And you can see that Danny Alves stayed low and, and central to precisely to make Joe Felix hesitate as to whether he should come and help Hermoso or not. And, and Pendry will, will have the same idea. He could make here um, a deep run into the, the half space, but he's confident in, in Dharma's 1v1 quality, so he's going to create even more space for him by making a run slightly back to draw not only Thomas Lamar with him, but also Joao Felix. This will make things easier for Adama, where he'll be able to, to dribble past Mario Moso and, and cross with ease. I'll let you enjoy. The second option uh, that Barcelona used to find a free winger was to create a numerical superiority up front. In the match against Athletic Club, where Kutila, the Basque right back, used to leave his defensive light to go and press high on this side when Barcelona were there, so the block runner were able to take advantage several times of, of this short moment when, when there were only three defenders left at, uh, at the back who, who used to leave. Precisely a lot of space on the other side, but Barcelona weren't only able to uh, to to switch uh, to switch play uh, very quickly. As Chavez men were also able to to take uh, even more advantage of of this situation of these situations through their positioning and especially the one of of Gavi in this case. The midfielder joins the forward line in this situations to occupy the left flank, creating a numerical superiority of four Catalans against four Basques and, and space for Adama. Daniel Vess is again going to be found in center as he is going to come and pin the, the Basque left midfielder. But what we have to appreciate here even more than the president's anticipation is, is Pedri's long ball to, to Adama, which which is going to be relatively low, so, so that the winger receives the ball as soon as possible. It's coming now, just like a shoot. Magnificent. 
The third and final way Barcelona facilitate this 1v1s on, on the wing is to overload one side and then play quickly to the other where the winger is completely alone. I didn't want to, to put the, the wall sequence here because it would have taken a long time, but I do want to point, to point out that the situation didn't happen as a result of a throw-in or, or a corner. It shows that the Blaugranas are really confident in, in their ability to, to play in small spaces, as they stayed like that for for uh, let's say let's say a, a good time on on the left on the left side of the pitch before finding the the right moment to to pass to Adama, and of course Daniel Vess is again in the center. This overload, this accumulation of players on one side, it's a, is also an, an advantage in, in case the ball is, be, is, is being lost. Because as we're going to see um, in the following sequence, the Catalans will, will be able to, to counter-press their, their opponents very quickly. Here we see that the players from form a, a kind of five-man rondo with only two opponents inside. So it would not be a problem to recover the ball in this area. But it's not... It's not even here that the ball loss is going to take place, but further forward. However, Barcelona is still going to dare to counter-press uh, as, it, uh, as it has really become a, a reflex in, since the arrival of Xavi. I'll let you watch this uh, short sequence uh, of plays in, in this reduced space. Once the ball is lost, uh, we see Barcelona having this reflex to, to rush towards the opponents who could potentially receive the ball, as well as towards the ball carrier. We see Nico, Nico Gonzalez and both uh, the youngs, Luke and Frankie, sprinting as soon as the, as the ball is lost. And thanks to this accumulation of players with a V4, they'll be able to push their opponents towards the side and sideline without uh, them having had time to react and really try to, to find space. <coughs> it's coming now. With Sergio Dest having come back, uh, six Barcelona players came to came to lock the, the opponents in this small space. A small space in which they're then going to there to, to combine again before Pedri's pass to, to the other side uh, a switch of, of play for, for Dembele. Memphis Depay's position will, was also important because if he had also uh, come to join his teammate, the opponent defenders would have been able to encircle the, the Blaugranas in this small space, which would have complicated the combination of, of passes we'll now be able to, to appreciate. Here, Pedro's ball, and he dares to play in these reduced spaces. Even though you've probably already heard of the concept of the, of the third man, I have to explain it to make sure you you do understand the <laughs> the, the concept of of the of the fourth man uh, afterwards. It's an evolved version the, of the of the Sherman concept uh, that Xavi implemented at Barca and explains in in a video of, of the of the coach's voice that you can find in the in the description. The concept of the of the Sherman is very simple. When a pass to a certain player is not possible, another player has to offer himself as a passing option between these two. Here. Eric Garcia can't pass the ball directly to, to Sergio Busquets. However, no opponent player could prevent a, a pass from uh, from Aubameyang to Busquets. The Gabonese is therefore going to, to ask for the ball because he saw, he saw Busquets is free. The first player is therefore Eric Garcia, the second Aubameyang, and this third man, the targeted player, is Sergio Busquets. However, this passing pattern can also precisely be completed by a fourth man, should the ball circulation be quick enough. In this respect, taking more than one touch could compromise it, because this fourth man will actually go deep behind the, the opponent defensive line, often, often taking advantage of the space left by central defenders who will have followed Aubameyang here. 
If the ball circulation is too low, they will have time to reposition themselves. You're now going to be able to appreciate the, the offensive run of, of Frankie de Jong, who is very good in this field, and who will go in behind as soon as he sees that Eric Garcia's pass is heading towards Aubameyang. It's coming now. Look at it. Fantastic run. I also picked um, a second sequence to illustrate this passing pattern that has been worked on so much that it has become automatic as here. The fourth man being in this case uh, Ferran Torres also started this run in, in behind before Aubameyang receives the ball. Here he had already uh, started this run um, a few seconds ago and, and a few meters back. I'll let you enjoy. But if Xavi has been able to transform Barca in this way on the pitch, it's also thanks to the work he's done of it. And I'm thinking in particular here of his involvement in, in bringing in the four players you see on the screen during the transfer window. Adama Traore, Ferran Torres, Dani Alves and Aubameyang. All four have a specific profile that Barca needed to diverse, diversify and improve certain aspects of aspects of their, of their game. As we've seen, Edma is a real threat in 1v1s on, on the wing where he often ends up sending a cross, crosses that Aubameyang himself has already sent several times directly into the net. So obviously Barca had with Usman Dembele and Luke de Jong, already players capable of the same thing. But Dembele is not as reliable as Adama, especially because he's often injured and not able to run as much as Spanish international. While Luke de Jong doesn't have Obama Young's ability to go and press or counter-press the opponent for a whole game, nor his ability to, to play in small spaces or to make, run in, to make runs in behind the, the opponent's defensive line. Because speed and depth is something that Barca really lacked, and we, we even saw them launch counter-attacks from, from their own box recently, like against Napoli and Athletic Club. Uh, something we hadn't seen for a long time was, was them. That being said, uh, when we talk about speed and depth, we tend to think first of uh, Edouard Traoré and Aubameyang, but Ferran Torres, although not as fast as them, is surely... Um, Surely he's the best of the three to, to make these runs in behind the defense, uh, as we saw in the last sequence. Even if he doesn't have the quality of Adama in 1v1, his good reading of, of the game in, indeed allows him to, to start his, his run at the right moment. Even more than, than Obama Young, he's a very good weapon when, when it comes to, to playing long balls, which makes it generally easy for Barcelona to advance, uh, to progress, um, to advance their team to progress into the, the opponent's half, where even if they lose the ball afterwards, their good pressing and, and, and counter pressing continues to make them dangerous, which, which explains why Xavi's men take more risks than under, under Koeman. In this respect, their defensive line also reacts very well to, to these moments of, of transitions by, by adopting the, the right height. As for Dani Alves, whose profile has already been described in the first chapter, I'd like to add that Xavi um, also surely brought him back to the club for his very professional winning, uh, winning mentality and the good atmosphere that he can bring to the dressing room. Brazilian symbolic is the Xavi management style, which I would sum up with the word demanding, confidence in one's abilities, and fun. The Catalan's demons were embodied on his first day by the introduction of 10 rules, mainly, oh, oh, what's happening here? Oh, please wait. Oh, no. Uh, so, by the introduction of, of 10 rules, mainly prohibitions and therefore possible fines and, and, section and sanctions, which you can find in the description. But to counterbalance these measures that could disturb many, Chavez put a smile back on his players' faces through his training session. 
As a warm-up, they often start with a so-called social-emotional game to, to spread good humor. It's also um, a way of relaxing the, the players since they can so they can they can so take away the possible pressure they might have put on themselves because, as you know, training sessions are the opportunity to convince the coach of your qualities. And I'm thinking here in particular for of youngster from the reserve team who sometimes comes to to do a trial training session with with the first team, which can be quite intimidating. But these games are not just about getting the players to feel confident. Confident. It's also about bringing them together. Professional um, footballers are, in most cases, only work colleagues with each other and often do not necessarily share time together in their private lives. By bringing them to closer together uh, through these games, the players will be more attached to the group and will want to work harder on the pitch for the team in the club. Not to mention that they will also look forward to to coming to training every day because uh, even more because they will also be able be happy to to meet their teammates uh, there. Chavis training sessions at Barcelona then consist of rondos, progression and situational games as well as exercises to let's say automate the different principles and, and concepts of positional play that, that some players precisely struggle to understand in in Chavez's first weeks uh, as a as Balsa coach uh, as said by by the latter himself. The, the fruit of uh, the fruit of Chavez's work can obviously be seen in the evolution uh, of the content of Balsa's games this season. It's therefore no coincidence that they've gone from ninth to second place in La Liga since his arrival. If you like tactical analysis, positional play, or even just FC Barcelona, I invite you to subscribe to, subscribe to, to my YouTube channel as I plan to publish more videos of this type, including one on the walk behind the success of La Masia, the club's famous academy. And if you liked my video, I invite you to, to click on the blue thumb and let me know about it in the comments. It would really help me a lot, more than you think. Bye-bye.